to another Telltale video, second in my series about the science fiction author James Tiptree Jr., also known by her real name as Alice Sheldon. This, her second story, is called, originally called The Mothership, and when it appeared in If Science Fiction in June of 1968. Um, I read it in 10,000 Light Years from Home, my beat-up copy, extra beat-up, because I tried to take the half-price book sticker off the cover, and it took some of the ink with. Mad about that. Um, but in here, it's called Mama Come Home. So it's it's been published under two different titles. Like I say, this is only Tiptree's second published story. But in this story, and, and now I've, I've read quite a few of Tiptree's works from the 1980s, and this story feels like, definitely like a Tiptree story. It, it's like she hit her, her full maturity with story number two. It's everything I remember and love about other James Tiptree stories. Wouldn't call this story great, but it definitely is a cool story. The Synopsis, basically, without spoilers, is that a spaceship lands on the moon and then sends a shuttle to Earth. And what comes out are eight and a half foot tall Amazon women. And they say they are from Capella. And when their DNA is analyzed, they're human. They're every bit human. And their story is that, yes, they had, they were responsible for starting the human race, for placing human beings on Earth uh, many, many, many millions of years ago. And uh, Earth was on one of their star charts. And this ship, it's a, a cargo ship, decided to stop and check out this notation on the star charts and found human beings. And they're, they're kind of surprised by the fact that men, you know, this is 1970, that men are running the world because women ran the world in, on Capella. And men were their slaves, more specifically sex slaves. Okay, I won't take the, the um, synopsis any farther than that because there's some twists that are, are very interesting. Uh, just know that this... Already, story number two, Tip Tree is diving into um, controversial subject and trying to upset the um, what were felt to be ridiculously moralistic standards of publishing in 1970 or, or 1968 in the case of this story. Authors at that time, and Harlan Ellison even released a whole anthology, Dangerous Visions, and a follow-up, again, D Dangerous Visions, where he invited authors to send stories that were rejected for their content. And not all of them were sexual in nature, but some of them, developed, some of them dealt with sex themes. There were certain words and situations relating to sexuality that you were not allowed to put in at least the science fiction magazines you would get rejected. Authors, before Tiptree was writing, authors found clever ways to get around this and use symbolism to get past the editor and get it into the magazine. And, you know, the editors were none the wiser until it was too late and in print that the story was really all about sex. Um, but by the late... 1960s, people were getting kind of tired of being told that they can't talk about one of the most important human functions, human relationships in our lives. And they, they felt it should be allowed for writers to talk about these things you know and, and outside of science fiction there was a lot of this going on too with with writers trying starting to tackle sexuality there was a more openness towards sex you had men's magazines getting racier 
um, you had movies, X-rated movies coming out to the theaters. There was kind of a, a, an interest in going down that route and um, talking about sex, talking about sex in more explicit manners. Now, Tip Tree doesn't go so far as to have sex scenes. There's nothing like that, but there is mention of rape. There is mention of men being taken to be sex slaves. So there is subject matter that previously would not have gotten into print because it was considered going too far. Tiptree put it in this story and she got Frederick Pohl to publish it. I believe Pohl was, was editing If in 1968. Tiptree got the story published and she continued to do that in a lot of her stories, you know, bringing in references to sexuality. Um, but like I say, at that time, you still didn't have outright sex scenes like you have in um, A Court of Mist and Fury or, you know, books like that. But there was an interest by writers, um, everybody from Le Guin to Joanna Russ to David Gerald to um, Alice Sheldon. Uh, and a lot of other authors in smaller ways in trying to break down these barriers to talking about a normal human function. Okay, so that's the... That's kind of the history and position that this story occupies, and I found it interesting. I did not realize this, that Tiptree went that far with story number two thought it kind of developed because Birth of a Salesman didn't have any sex in it but it did have kind of a humor this story still carried that lighter tone kind of satirical humor about the subject lightness to it not flat out jokes where you're sitting and laughing in your sofa but just a general feeling of poking fun and and laughing at the subject not being too not taking itself too seriously so I wouldn't give it a top tail but I did thoroughly enjoy it it is classic tip tree this is what tip trees writing is is all about and and I do recommend it I think if if you like that sort of thing if this sounds interesting to you I would recommend try, giving it a try it's very good So on to story number three. I forget what it is, but it's the third published story by James Diptree. Actually, no, in he, the next one in this book will be number four. The number three is in Warm Worlds and Otherwise, which I also have a copy of. So come back and join me for that one. Like us, subscribe to us, leave comments. Come back and see all of our other videos. And until the next one, thank you for joining me.